So what I'm holding here is a multimeter, logger, and oscilloscope, all for your mobile phone. Let's check it out. So the guys at Pocket Meter sent me this to uh, have a play with on uh, one of our cars, and I'm really interested to see what it can do. So if you're interested to check these out, then there is a link below. If you use the link to buy the uh, Pocket Meter, then we do get a small percentage of that, so really appreciate it. As you might guess, I'm really interested to see what the oscilloscope can do. I haven't really checked it out fully. I've downloaded the app and had a little play, so let's see how intuitive this thing is. So inside the box, what you get is a small pouch to keep the pocket meter inside. You get a couple of these small wire clamps which push onto the probes and you get the pocket meter itself. I mean, check out how small that is. In the marketing material, they're showing it being used as a key ring. So when I opened mine, there was a little tab in the back. So all you've got to do is remove the battery case, just twist the cover and lift it off then you can remove the uh, isolation tab off the back of the battery and you're ready to go. All you've got to then do is download the app from the App Store, whether you're on iPhone or Android. Uh, just go onto your App Store, type in Pocket Meter and you can download it there, really straightforward. It's really easy to connect it to. So the meter itself, you might be thinking, we've got these red and black tabs on each side there. All you do is pull like this, and you've got your measurement probes here. And then when you're finished with it, there's a little button on the top there. You just press that and it's automatically wound up. So in the box, you do get the, like these little wire clamps here and they just push onto the probes like this. Um, I did speak to the pocket, the guys at Pocket Meter and there may be uh, some four millimeter banana type probes in the future, which of course we uh, know and love in the automotive testing world. However, all I've done for now is just uh, bought some of these T-pins. I think they use them in uh, kind of textile and sewing. And all I'm going to do is use this as a back probe and poke that into the wire in the back of the connector and then clip the probe onto it like that. Okay, so if we open up that app here, we can see that we'll go into straight into the multimeter mode. When I did connect mine up, it came up with a battery low warning. Um, I thought that was quite odd because it did come with a battery inhibitor in the back there. So I did message the guys at Pocket Meter and they said there was a firmware update and that would fix that problem. It was really easy to do and it did indeed fix it straight away. We had a uh, full battery health um, showing on the display. In the multimeter mode then, we've got all of our features down the uh, right hand side of the screen. We've got our voltage settings, AC, DC, and you can see that we've got maximum 60 volts DC, and that is the maximum input in oscilloscope mode as well. It should cover most tests that we'd expect to do on a car, so that should be good. Multimeter functions then, we can see there we've just uh, selected current mode and it does give a warning just in case you were to forget that it was in current mode and connected up across the battery you're going to pop the fuse however very thoughtful of pocket they did put an extra fuse in the box just in case you do pop the fuse and really on here you've got uh, some good features that you'd expect to see on you know a, a high range multimeter so we've got a temperature set in there and there's actually a temperature sensor inside the unit balmy 20 degrees here in the UK today um, and then you've got the continuity diode test and resistance features on there as well so loaded with uh, functionality there so let's get on the car then and see what it can do okay so just looking at the scale here then we've got 0 0.00 millivolts this would really be quite suitable for checking volt drop on fuses it's auto ranging so you've got to be really careful with that if we connect it up to the battery now just go on the ground and the live here. You can see there that we've gone straight up to 12.75 volts. We've got a good battery there and it's, it's automatically adjusted the range to suit the measurement we're taking. Okay, so we'll start up the car and it's good. I can take it with me. I'm sat in the car now with my phone, turned on the ignition and the voltage has dropped a bit. Start the engine, and there we are, straight up to 14.8 volts. Works really well. So let's check out the logger function. 
This is similar to the multimeter function. You can do the same uh, tests here. We can select the range. We've got voltage, current, and temperature. And the range we want here is 30 volts to capture up to nearly 15 volts. Intervals you can set there. We want one second intervals and it's going to tell us there we can capture up to 103 minutes. It can actually go all the way up to eight months of data logging, which is pretty big. Okay, then all you do is press this red tab here to begin logging, and we'll go and start the engine. Okay, we're in, ignition is on. Engine started. Let's just let it settle. Okay, that'll do. So when you want to finish your logging, you just hit that red tab again, and you can see there that we've got our uh, line on here. We can long press to add a cursor on the screen. So if you press actually on the screen where you want to measure, we can see there that we've got 12.68 there. And then here where it goes up, we've got 14.84. Um, if you hold on the tabs, you can actually drag the cursors around. So just by clicking where the uh, where the number displays. So that could be useful for uh, battery drains. Maybe if you set it up with a current shunt rather than doing inline current, two amps isn't very much and you'll probably blow the fuse quite quickly if uh, you were to turn the ignition on or wake the car up. Um, let me know down below what you think you could use this logger uh, function for as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at the oscilloscope. So what I've done is I've fitted a couple of T-pins into that uh, injector just there, and we'll connect up the uh, pocket meter and see what we get. So we'll go for a 60 volt voltage scale. We'll set the time window. We'll leave that at 250 milliseconds there. Let's press the red tab to record, and wow, there we go. Check that out. We can actually zoom then both ways, just using your fingers. And there we've got a nice injector waveform pattern. So the same again, you can long press on the tab to put your uh, measurements in. Let's put another one in there, and then we can zoom in and measure our injector opening time there. So we've got just over four milliseconds and then a voltage peak of 49 volts. So one thing you might notice about this is you don't get a live oscilloscope view that you might do on your normal Pico scope. It works more like a single trigger where you set the scope up hit record and then it will display the readings that we get. So that was a pretty good signal. I did see on there that we've also got a trigger function. So let's have a play with the trigger function and see how it fares up on a diesel injector. Okay, so we're gonna connect up to the diesel injector on this BMW 320. I've got the T-pins here and I've bent them slightly just so that they don't touch each other, just so they kind of go out away from each other. Luckily on this car, if they did touch each other, the worst that would happen is we don't get a misfire. However, depending on what you're measuring, that could cause a short circuit. So we'll connect up the pocket meter then to the T-pins. Okay, connect it up. Okay, so I'm in the car, the engine's running, we're connected up to the injector. Let's select oscilloscope voltage window we're going to go with 60 volts because these diesel injectors operate on a slightly higher voltage time window we're going to go for 25 milliseconds we have got the option there for a rising trigger but we can't actually adjust it until we've taken a measurement and at the minute there you can see that we didn't actually capture it so if we click on the rising trigger here where the words are we can move the trigger up and down and let's set the trigger to 15 volts because we know it's going to go above that. And there we are. Okay, so it's captured one of the injector signals there. Let's just capture again, see if we can capture both of them. There we are. Okay. That's pretty good, that is. 
So we've got both of our injectors there, a pre and a post. We can zoom in a bit and we've got up to 40 volts there. So we've got 40 volts initial um, activation, then it goes down to a pulsing mode. And then we can see the spike at the bottom is where the solenoid is turned off. So that was pretty good. Now for the canvas test. Okay, so I've come up to my favourite measuring point on this uh, E90 BMW 4 powertrain can. Of course, powertrain can isn't, uh, can't be reached at the OBD plug on this car. So we're just going into the fuel pump control module there. How we've connected it up for the one channel measurement, I've gone uh, the red lead to can high and the black lead to can low. And what we're looking there for then is the difference between the two. So if you think about how these devices work and uh, multimeters, it's looking at the difference between the red lead and the black lead. So when we're at 2.5 volts, we should have 2.5 volts on one lead, 2.5 on the other. That means we've got a difference of zero volts. And that's what our scope should read. When we go to a uh, message state on CAN, so CAN high is going to go up to 3.5, CAN low is going to go down to around 1.5. There we've got a difference of two volts. So that's what we should see when it's transmitting a message on here. Okay, so settings for this, because we are looking at a much lower voltage, I'm gonna select five volts as our voltage range. Um, time window, then I'm gonna go really low. I'm gonna start with one millisecond. Let's uh, hit capture and see what we get. Okay, and there we go. We've got a CAN message there. So as expected, look, we've got zero volts that goes up to just over two volts. Um, and that's our CAN message there. So it actually picks up CAN. It's not as detailed as what you might expect on a PicoScope unit. However, you know, what do you expect from a key ring? So what's the verdict then? Um, well, I think it's amazing. I'm definitely gonna be taking this everywhere with me. However, it's not gonna replace my PicoScope um, other test equipment. Um, certainly the PicoScope, you can do a lot more analysis and get a lot kind of uh, clearer images due to the, the higher sample rate for the screen size. However, you know, we did the basic multimeter functions there. We also captured some injectors and some canvas measurements. Um, there's also a spectrum analyzer feature on there, which we didn't look at. So that's pretty good if you're into kind of audio testing and things like that. So it's really good, I'm really impressed. Go and check it out.